Well, 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 it's March and we already have a highlight from the National Hurricane Center. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. It's been a while, but wanted to hop on and talk about this thing. The first area of interest, as it's called, that first little yellow blob of the 2025 hurricane season, and it's not even the start of the official season just yet. To answer the question posed in the title of this video, no, this is not the start just yet. It may give some subtle clues that we will get to a little bit later on in this video of what we could be dealing with for the upcoming hurricane season once it officially starts. We all know it. You can get these things outside of the season. March is pretty early, though. 10% shot for development as designated by the National Hurricane Center. Again, it does not appear, and I'll show you in a second the modeling, that we're going to get any significant development with this thing. Um, nonetheless, it still looks decently healthy, this non-tropical low that's out there, but it's trying to fire some storms around its center, and that's going to be one of the main um, characteristics from when you're talking about a non-tropical area of low pressure to a tropical low. We're going to get into that definition also at the end of this video. So if you're interested in how you might be able to pick out these different surface entities, these areas of low pressure yourself, stick around to the end. Also, if you want to stay updated on the weather and get nerdy and sciencey with us, because that's what we like to do here on this channel, you come to the right place. Hit that subscribe button for me. Okay, let's get to it. So here we go now with this uh, spinny thing. It's in the middle of nowhere. This is going to impact nobody. It may kicked up the surf a little bit in Bermuda because it's going to do a little dance with our cold front. So here is our non-tropical low right now. We'll get back to that in one second. All of these uh, big bright reds and yellows, those are the thunderstorms left over from our devastating severe weather outbreak across parts of the plains, Great Lakes, and into the deep south and southeast over the last couple of days. That has finally wound down. This is the area kind of in question, at least in the area highlighted by the National Hurricane Center. It also developed off a cold front, kind of pinched off the southern end of that front, but you see the spiral here. Now, still most of the nasty weather is to the north and east of this center of low pressure. It certainly maybe looks a little like a tropical system, but we still have drier air kind of punching up in and around the center, and then those thunderstorms along the cold front, which kind of extend back a little bit. So we do still have fronts attached to this, again, making it non-tropical in nature. Uh, the tropical part and the reason why it's gotten that highlight, we do have a little flare-up, a few flare-ups, around the center, meaning that we do have some thunderstorms trying to get going. Whether they become sustained enough, it's likely going to be unlikely. and Likely we won't see this one uh, progress any further, but still interesting that we do have that highlight and we're talking about things being in the third week of March. So here is the model forecast. Again, off to the left here, that's the cold front. That was the storm system responsible for the nasty weather across the United States over the last few days. The devastating uh, storms we're thinking about, everybody that have lost homes and certainly lives and that uh, warranted a high risk for sure. That's a story for another time. Um, if you've seen those arguments out there on the interwebs, it's a terrible place these days, the internet. Um, here is our area of low pressure. That's the non-tropical entity that's highlighted from the Hurricane Center. Notice all of the big, bright yellow and red. That's where all the thunderstorms are. It's at the north and to the east of the system. Uh, modeling doesn't really wrap it up, and you see we lose a lot of those thunderstorms as we get into Tuesday the 18th. And then we start to see a little merging going on. Here is our front. Here is this now open wave that we have uh, kind of to the east of the system. And then they kind of just merge or combine and then just do a little dance off of uh, right around Bermuda. So I mentioned before about this not really not impacting anybody. It's not going to impact anyone in the sense of a, a direct landfall, but certainly some inclement weather in and around Bermuda because we have this frontal system coming in off of the Atlantic or off the eastern seaboard through the Atlantic. And then we have that non-tropical area of low pressure kind of merging with it. So some choppy waves, some scattered thunderstorms, and things like that. But from a bona fide tropical system, no one is going to be impacted by that because it's likely not going to become tropical in nature. I wanted to show you, though, you see kind of spin, spin, uh, pinwheeling there, spiraling. I was combining spiraling and pinwheeling. I don't even know what the word I was trying to say anymore. Water temperatures, they're still pretty warm. Um, we've had several cold fronts go through, and it's just basically on the shelf that the water temperatures are chilly. These are the actual uh, water temperatures now. So you see parts of the Gulf even um, still upper 70s to around 80 degrees. Where that thing is right now, it's in the mid-70s. Typically, when you're looking for tropical uh, cyclogenesis, a storm to become tropical or and develop and strengthen, 
you're looking for water temperatures around 80 degrees. So again, take that to the bank, um, put that in your in your uh, compartment for the start of hurricane season. We really start to talk about these things. Still, though, pretty decently warm. We have water temperatures in the mid to upper 70s in that area. Forget about the Caribbean. It is still juiced, low to mid 80s in the Caribbean. What is on the cooler side, relatively speaking, is the main development region, at least. It has been. For that, I want to show you the anomalies, and I didn't go far enough to the east. And this is kind of one of the interesting pressure patterns that we have, and it's kind of changed a little bit, but we do have um, this anomaly going on. So now what I'm showing you, and to be clear, before those were the actual sea surface temperatures. Now what we're looking at is the anomaly. So the darker the yellow, orange, and red, that's the warmer than normal temperatures. And then the bluer and whiter color, that's going to be normal to then colder than normal. Then we have the really big cold anomaly um, right up in through here through the North Atlantic. But one of the interesting things here, and, and by the way, where our storm is kind of right about here, that's where temperatures are warmer than normal. So you may expect some of that kind of ugly subtropical development. I mean, it is March, but as we get deeper, at least we get closer to hurricane season, we may start seeing more of those junky storms try to fire up. But this is the one interesting thing I think that we're going to be watching through the start of hurricane season is how much um, the eastern half of the main development region has cooled. We do have some cooler than normal temperatures right near southeast of Cabo Verde, right off the coast of Africa, and then through the middle part of the main development region. But where it is still juiced is the Caribbean and certainly the central and western Gulf. Um, we've been keeping tabs on the ENSO pattern as well. I mentioned about the clues that we could possibly um, take away from this. And again, it's not many, but we're just kind of going into some other different things here we have like a weird thing that we're still technically in la nina um which would enhance the hurricane season but we also have like an easterly loaded almost el nino trying to peek through and the western side of enso is on the cold side so that's going to be one of the things that we're really going to watch going into hurricane season and then just kind of the clues i think one thing that we're biting on and meteorologist david nazario has been talking about this a little bit more in depth is going to be the fact that maybe we have more action up here. We get fronts coming through, and we have more of the subtropical season this year. We have it more active in this part. And I would love that if we get those garbage, dirty-looking, ugly-looking storms that just meander and just give the fish a nice wild ride and stay away from land. With that said, I do think... And again, we'll go into more detail about this later. This is more about just that little area of interest that the Hurricane Center has highlighted. Um, and then maybe some more homegrown storms or gyre-grown storms that we always talk about. Um, in this area, we're going to have to watch as we get into the hurricane season or closer to the start of the 2025 hurricane season when we start to get the atmosphere uh, in line with the ocean as well. Okay, I know you guys have been waiting the entire video for this. If you really want to get nerdy and sciencey and some things to watch when you see the people um on twitter x youtube that inaccurately um identify something as tropical for the clicks you can get into the comment section you can be like hey wait a minute i know what that definition of a tropical cyclone is and here are the main points here we need the system to be closed having a well-defined circulation at the surface. A lot of times you're going to see it spin on satellite, but that's the mid-level circulation that you're going to see. You need to see it tight at the surface. You can find that out from satellite representation if one passes over. Certainly if there's a Hurricane Hunter aircraft going in there or um, just using the satellite and again uh, looking at the low-level cloud motion or if there's observations from ships and things like that. Those are the ways you do it. And by the way, um, tropical cyclone, I know there's a lot of pushback, like, hey, when do we start calling these things tropical cyclones? They're just hyping it up. Not really. Not exactly. They're always tropical cyclones. We just know them in our part of the world, in our basin, as tropical depressions, tropical storms, and hurricanes. But again, they're all under that tropical cyclone umbrella. That's what they are known as worldwide. And then each basin has their own nomenclature if you will. And then we have depressions, storms, and hurricanes. Okay. So enough about that little rant. Tropical cyclone, uh, to continue the definition, once it has that closed, well-defined circulation at the surface, then the next part of the thing, you need to have organized deep convection. It's a fancy term for organized thunderstorms that continue and continuously 
erupt around the center. That's when the storm can then sustain itself and really start to crank up that heat engine, as we know it as, and start to feed off of the warm waters of the ocean rather than from differences in temperature and pressure in the atmosphere like the storm that brought that severe weather outbreak to the United States uh, over the last couple of days. That's what we call a baroclinic low. Tropical cyclones are known as barotropic. They form in a uniform atmosphere uh, in temperature and pressure. So went kind of uh, really meteorology 101 there, but that's what we love about this channel. We like to have the weather conversation with you guys. We like to uh, talk about the weather. We like to give you the science of meteorology, unlike some other places that are all like, sound the alarm bells. This is coming. This just got worse. And uh, unfortunately, we're going to see a lot of that when we get into the upcoming hurricane season, we certainly already saw that with uh, parts of the severe weather stuff. But anyway, always like to be transparent with you guys. That's why we're here. We love to have the Q&A. We love to have the weather conversation. It's been a while, guys. Thanks so much for sticking around with us. We're going through a little bit of change on the channel. You're going to notice uh, some things um, happening on the channel. Uh, I think some cool graphical upgrades and um, more posting as well. We're going to get back to posting a lot as we go forward, but there's been some going, some changes going on with the channel, some different ideas and things like that, but we're so back, as the kids say. Be safe out there, and again, we're thinking of everybody impacted by the nasty weather that has come through uh, the United States over the last couple of days. It has been significant. Um, don't let any of the crazy storm chasers that are out there that thought that it was a dud um, lower the impact. It's been pretty sickening what I've seen on social media. That rant um, can go on for hours upon hours, but I will leave you with that. Alrighty, guys. Have a great weekend. Happy St. Patty's Day to anybody that celebrates. We'll catch you soon.